Welcome to the lecture on non probability sampling techniques. During the lecture on introduction to sampling, I discussed the basic differences between probability sampling and non probability sampling. If you can't remember, go back and watch again the video on introduction to sampling techniques and the video on different sampling techniques. I will quickly recall the basic differences between probability sampling and non-probability sampling. We know that if you have watched the previous videos, probability sampling, we try to maintain randomness throughout the sampling procedure. But here in non-probability sampling, we are not much interested on random sampling. We are also interested in representativeness. We are trying to take a representative sample covering the whole population in probability sampling technique. But when it comes to non-probability sampling, we are not much worried about representativeness. What about bias? I explain simple random sampling is the most unbiased technique. And cluster sampling and multi stage are the sampling techniques with highest bias under probability sampling techniques. But again, we are trying to minimize the bias even during cluster sampling and multi stage sampling. But here in non probability sampling, we might get high bias, but we are trying to maintain low bias. Then, I told you from the beginning, one of the main steps is calculating the adequate sample size. In non-probability sampling also, even though we do not follow random procedure, we are not interested in representative sample, it is important to maintain adequate sample size. The sample must be adequate. What are the other differences? One of the most important findings is if the total population is small and if it is a finite population, if all the individuals are almost same, we call that property as homogeneous. So if homogeneous population, assume that the population size is 200 and all are same, if the sample size required is 50, if all are same, why do we waste our time to do simple random sampling or other probability sampling techniques? We have to generate random numbers, we have to put lotteries, several procedures. If all are same, whichever the 50 individual will be almost same. So, we can easily go for non-probability sampling. We just pick 50 people because the property of homogeneity in the population. And another important thing is, we are not interested in generalizing. If we are not interested in generalizing, why do we need a probability sampling? Assume that you are the owner of a factory. You need to identify what they are thinking about your factory. In such case, you are not interested to tell other people, this is the general perspective of my factory workers about my factory. To have some idea, to do some modifications, you can take few of the workers in your factory and interview them and have some idea. You don't need generalizing. You, have, you just need to get some idea. In such case, we can go for non-probability sampling. And additionally, we will get different benefits because of non-probability sampling. If you do not have adequate money to conduct this research, we can go for non-probability sampling, but we will not be able to generalize your findings. Cost will be minimal and the time will be less. So like that, there are so many other advantages even using non-probability sampling, but we can't generalize our finding. But in special circumstances, we may be able to generalize our findings. But most of the time, we will not be able to generalize our findings. In the next few lectures, we will discuss about the different sampling techniques under non-probability sampling techniques.